but I just want to read a section from your website. It says that the ancient world, prior to recorded history, was once more advanced scientifically, technically, and spiritually than the global civilization of the present world age. And indeed, um, that this fact has been willfully kept from the masses for millennia. Concerned with looking at things from a, a mythological standpoint, which I quickly realized, as many authors have, that the ancient myths that we have, say the Greek gods and so forth, or mm -hmm. Egyptian myths, um, they have an astronomical uh, or, e or even a physics base to them. I think it's the Torah, uh, where, whereby God wanted to test man's iniquity, so he sent two angels down to see if they would fare any better on earth, mm -hmm. Harrod and Marat. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They found a woman attractive, and they had intercourse with her. Yes. And a witness to that fact, they murdered the witness. Mm -hmm. So they had to put their hands up and said that on earth, on the earthly plane, they were no better than man. Yes. Um, however, because of that act, God um, consigned them to roam the earth forever. Some versions say they were uh, consigned to hang upside down in a Babylonian well For forever. Those watchers, some people Yeah, call the watchers, yeah. or the Gregory. But um, the fact is that all of these ancient writings, and including the Bible, there is some interaction be between a greater power and those people that roamed the earth at that time. And I, I use the word people loosely because I think there were little more than Neanderthals, who aren't our descendants, by the way, they're just cousins. Yes. We kind of, there wasn't room for both of us. <laughs> so basically, what it, it, the conclusions I've drawn from, from that are pretty logical that no person alive today is indigenous to this earth. Yeah. We are, at the very least, hybrids of a greater power. We are gods in the making, if you like. Yeah. Structures like these massive uh, megalithic structures, like uh, Stonehenge or the Great Pyramid, if you look very carefully at them, and you evaluate them in the right sort of way, and you're open-minded, uh, in terms of looking at the past, and you're not caught up with this axiomatic assumption that everything that came before must be uh, inferior to what's come afterwards. Mm -hmm. If you look at these structures and evaluate them, especially mathematically, especially with regard to, say, the, the dimensions of the Earth, as we know them today, mm -hmm. to our accurate uh, standards, mm -hmm. you can see that they must have had the same standards, mm -hmm. and therefore they must have um, had a, a model of the Earth comparable to the best one we have today. If, if you have a circle and you split that up into degrees, you've got, you have 360 degrees in a circle. Yeah. And it is a, an accepted fact, I believe, that um, the, where that came from, the, the degree system having 360 in a circle, that came from the fact that the ancients once thought there were 360 days in a year. That, that's where that, this, that's why we split it up a yep. circle into 360 and not 400 or 600 yep. or any other number. It's, it, it was because the ancients thought there were 360 days in the year. Is that, is that correct? That's exactly correct. So, so a modern day scientist would say, yes, but they were wrong. It was actually, it's always been 365 and a quarter. Yes, they would. <laughs> That's what they would say. Yes. But you think there was at some time, you, and I don't think you know exactly when that time was, that there was a 360 day year. Oh, yes. And at the same time, I believe also the moon had 30 days per month, just in line with the ancient Egyptian calendar. Right. And this would make everything extremely harmonious in terms of, yes. you know, the, you'd have 30 divides exactly into 360. Yeah. Um, we've got in Genesis, and it came to pass uh, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men and they were fair, and they, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Uh, so, what it's speaking about is that the angels come down and, and take wives of men and create the Nephilim. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the Nephilim in these ancient texts are where they were, they were like super beings. So, as I said before, we, uh, we are pod god, if you like. When we were manipulated as a race so many years ago, and we do obviously have godlike qualities, which explains now, some of us haven't known it, some of us haven't don't know it, some of us are good at it, etc. Um, which explains... But when you say God, you, you're, you're not meaning the omnipresent uh, oh, God no. that created the universe. No. You don't mean that, do you? No, I mean the greater power... Uh, that possibly created man 
a few hundred thousand years ago. Yeah. A, 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 perhaps an extraterrestrial well, race. Well, I'll, I'll say it's certainly an extraterrestrial race, without a doubt. Right. right. To, to my mind, not some omnipotent being yeah. with a long beard. It was a, 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 a higher intelligence, mm -hmm. for want of a better word, extraterrestrial, mm -hmm. not of the earth. And um, some of us have more control over these powers, or they know that they have them, so they exercise them, and some of us don't. Yes. The powers that be keep us segregated and separated and down so that we don't realize that power for the yes. one ends. Now every now and again, for instance, the first of the Nephilim was said to be giants. I mean, Goliath was said to be a giant, a Nephilim. But uh, obviously, as he's mated with the daughters of man, we're not so tall anymore. Mm. And we have many references in the Bible to people living to be well over 100 years, yeah. 200 years. Methuselah, uh, Moses was supposed to be 400 years plus. Now at first I thought that was time dilation, that they may have took him away from Earth, traveled near to the speed of light when time yeah. slows down, and then brought him back 400 years later, yeah. hence he's 400 year old. Yeah. But now when you think about it, um, I read in the papers the other day that uh, the, now that they've mapped the human genome, they've identified the aging gene that within 10 years they'll be able to give you a pill that will stop your aging and you can live for as long as you like. Now if you think about it, all of our religions, especially Christianity, promise life everlasting, immortality. They were hinting that this is possible for us. I've believed for many years that the pyramids are not there for aesthetic purposes, that they have a function. They are some kind of machine. When you look at the, the way that the, some of the stone channels are cut inside and the way that rock, you know, the stones interlock and, and there's mm. so many channels in there which they're obviously not walkways because they're too small. Mm. The list goes on and on and on and on as to why they, they appear to be a machine. But uh, in terms of the function, I do believe that uh, the researcher Christopher Dunn is correct in that it's a power plant. It was built by an ancient civilization as a, a device to tap into the energy of the earth itself via resonance as a couple oscillator. When the uh, pyramids were in their prime, shall we say, mm -hmm. um, they were encased in marble, polished marble. Yeah. Now, if you imagine you'll go to the, you go into the desert and you see the heat rising off the desert floor, mm -hmm. what you'll actually see is a re reflection of the sky. Yeah. So if you were looking at an actual pyramid um, from a distance in Egypt when they were in their prime. The Giza pyramid when it was built, yeah. For an example, yeah, not yeah. just that, but many yeah. others. All right. Um, what you would actually see from a distance is, um, as the heat was rising up, you wouldn't be able to see the land. And as the, um, the sides of the pyramids were all finely polished, mm -hmm. what you'd get is a reflection of the sky. Right. So you wouldn't see the pyramid itself, yeah. but you would just see the capstone, which is the, the, the key to the pyramids. On right. the, uh, just sitting in, in the sky. It would look like it was floating in the air. You, you wouldn't, pretty incredible. So it's, it's like a tuning fork which you, you set off at a certain frequency, which uh, it's to do with the Earth's resonant frequency. So, yeah. uh, and it's getting energy from the Earth somehow via resonance. The Great Pyramid has been sighted relative to the Earth in such a way as to achieve a harmonious relationship. Now, the one I identified was 14,400 to 1 in terms of the latitude and the actual base length of the pyramid. Now, if you get the Great Pyramid and you have a technical equipment inside and you set it in motion, you can then tap into the massive seismic activity of the Earth or its frequencies mm -hmm. associated with it. You're able to draw off power. But the, the power of so the So you Earth, would say that <coughs> there was this part of the pyramid yeah. that was missing, which was a piece of technology which basically kicked off the, 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 like the, the thing that started the pyramid resonated. What I'd say that's is missing. the pyramid is like a decommissioned power plant. All that's got all we've got now is the stone structure, mm -hmm. but I would imagine there would be some very high-tech equipment inside the grand gallery section, things rolling up and down, mm -hmm. the grooves, and I believe that there was the equipment which would get the pyramid to, to resonate slightly, to, to, you know, agitated yep. state, yep. but in a controlled way. And if you get the frequency right there, you can tap into the massive frequency energies associated with the Earth. If you look at the pyramids now, they've got this kind of flat piece on the top where mm -hmm. you think, well, most people say, well, there was a capstone there, which was mm -hmm. just the end bit of the pyramid. But you believe uh -uh, th there was something on top of there. So Absolutely. describe what that was, uh, Tony. 
um, we always see, even on the dollar bill, you've got the missing capstone of the, of the pyramid. Which is, generally has a little gap, Absolutely. which people say signifies the, you know, the them and us, they have the all-seeing eye, or they, they have the knowledge and the masses don't, I guess it's sort of a... Yeah. It's, that's pretty much correct, but it goes way, way beyond that. None of the pyramids in the world at the moment are, are finished, as it were. In other words, they're not complete. Mm -hmm. They've all been desecrated, destroyed, blown up, anything to, to get rid of the to information. Stop them, that to stop them functioning as their original... As they were originally right, okay. intended. Um, and, and this thing on the top is a key to its function. Absolutely. So, but the thing is... And again, you're, you're not sure whether it's, you're talking about yeah. audio frequencies, um, electromagnetic frequencies, yeah. you, you haven't specified that. I, I, haven't, don't think, I haven't specified that. But it's that a resonance either. of some kind. It's a resonance of some kind, naturally emitted by the Earth. Which is pulling energy from, from yeah. the Earth. But the key thing is, your coupled oscillator, your, your, well, your device, the Great Pyramid, you put in a little bit of energy, so to speak, to actually get the thing in motion. Uh -huh. But once you get the frequency right, you have now tapped into this massive energy store that the Earth has. To, to describe it um, physically and then we'll show an image on the screen when you're describing it, what, what you believe mm -hmm. the top of the finished pyramid was. A uh, Merkaba with um, a gold Merkaba. A solid gold Merkaba. Solid gold Merkaba. Now, if we consider a tetrahedron, which is a triangle, yeah. a, an equilateral triangle in three dimensions Absolutely. with another tetrahedron inside it, that's, that's essentially what a Merkaba is. It's a geometrically perfect sort of shape. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It resonates with the energy of creation itself. Right. So you've got this solid gold Merkaba. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And go on, how does that fit into the top of the pyramid? What we've got is a solid gold Merkaba, which is basically on the top. And we've got four skirts which mm -hmm. come off the, the Merkaba. Solid and it's gold as well? Yes, solid yeah. gold as well. Right. And it's geometrically positioned so that when the actual holy grail, which is what it is, yeah. sits on the surface, on the top, the very capstone of the pyramid, yeah. um, it then activates the pyramids as to what their real purpose is and what they were intended right. for, built for, right. and that encompasses a lot of different things. Right. How does that then um, activate the pyramid? Not only are they aligned to mirror the stars, mm -hmm. they're also aligned to true north. What you do when you complete the pyramid, i.e. put on the capstone, mm -hmm. and this is the, the one, you connect the whole grid. Right. You connect with the magnetosphere, you connect with the Earth's energy ley lines, you connect with the, the cosmic energy which is coming out through the whole solar system. We have the keys to opening up massive flows of energy to come down to the Earth, because all, right. all the ones on Earth have been turned off. They've been right. literally decapitated yeah. um, to make sure that that energy doesn't get down here. Jacob had his name changed at, that, at Bethel mm -hmm. to Israel, champion of God, because he was going to champion God's cause in the world. And uh, he had 12 sons who fathered the 12 tribes of Israel. And uh, most people probably know about Joseph and the coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. uh, Joseph was the 11th son and was Jacob's favorite, you know, Israel's favorite son. Most people don't understand the story of the coat of many colors and why uh, giving that coat to Joseph uh, upset all of his brothers because he was the youngest. Uh, when it talks about the coat of many colors, it's not talking about the colors of the spectrum. Okay? Each of the 12 sons had a tribal standard, an emblem a flag, if you like, or colours as they're known in the military. Mm -hmm. Each regiment has its colours, it has a flag, it has an emblem. Mm -hmm. Okay, And what uh, Jacob Israel did was he made a coat out of all the colours mm -hmm. of his sons mm -hmm. and then gave it to Jacob, which signified that Jacob was, was going to be the leader, was going to rule over the other the other sons, the other tribes, as they became. And uh, of course the others, as he was the youngest at the time, uh, that really upset uh, his elder brothers. Right. And so they sold him into slavery in Egypt, which most people also know from the Bible, if they read the Bible. And through a, a set of circumstances in, in Egypt, he became the Pharaoh's right-hand man. He was the second most powerful man in Egypt. And then there was a famine in Egypt and throughout the Middle East. 
And so Jacob Israel and his sons and their families needed food. And Joseph had, in becoming the second in command to the Pharaoh, he had designed a plan in Egypt where they were, uh, there were seven years of plenty and then seven years uh, of, of famine. And so that was the dream that the Pharaoh had had that, Jay, that Joseph interpreted for, for him. And so they saved all the spare food from the seven years of plenty to cover the seven years of famine. And so they, they had stored all the food, they had plenty of food, and people came from all around to, get, to buy food from Egypt. And uh, so Jacob Israel sent his sons down into Egypt to, to buy food mm -hmm. uh, from the Egyptians, from the Pharaoh. And uh, they went, and it's all, it's all in, the, in the Bible, they went and Joseph recognized that his brothers but because he had been a young boy when they sold him into slavery and he was now a man and he dressed as an Egyptian and he spoke Egyptian rather than their language uh, they didn't realize who he was but he knew he recognized them. So the, the stone was taken to Egypt then? Yes, yes, eventually what happened was that uh, Joseph uh, revealed his identity to his brothers and he said he forgave them and he said I want you to bring my father and all of your families and come down into Egypt and I will provide for you and, and you know everything will be fine 